Hi guys, I'm Allie. An onchectomy is an elective procedure, always done by a veterinarian under anesthesia. The purpose of it is to remove the claws of a cat, and usually the reason for this is to reduce the scratching behaviors that typically are destructive. It usually results in postoperative complications um, and some behavioral alterations. An onchectomy is just a fancy name for decline. Um, it's also a series of amputations of the third phalanx, which basically if I show you on my finger, um, we have phalanxes as well, they're just the bones in your finger. The third phalanx is the tip of our finger. So like here up is our th third phalanx. Um, with cats, the third phalanx is actually part of the nail. If you look in the picture there, um, the phalanx and the claw are combined, and then it's followed by the second and the first phalanx. And it basically just eliminates the destruction of scratching behaviors because they don't have any claws left. So what's really cool about the feline foot is that cats actually walk on their toes. Um, it's called the digitigrade. Um, and they just happen to walk on their toes because it helps with balance and um, exercise. It makes them very agile. Um, it also helps with stretching and um, just overall movement. Um, if you compare the human hand there to the feline foot, if we were to walk on our toes, um, basically their toes are our fingertips. So it would be very uncomfortable for us, but for them, they make it work. Now, when cats are declawed, um, they remove those bones so that they can't walk how they normally would. Um, it usually alters the way they touch the ground um, and usually makes it so it's at an abnormal angle. There's three main ways to do an onchectomy. The first one is a dissection. A veterinarian will take a scalpel and make an incision um, between the, the uh, distal phalanx, or excuse me, the third phalanx and the the second phalanx, um, and they will um, sever the um, the ligament that holds the two together. Once that's severed, they'll take out the third phalanx, um, and then they can either leave it open or um, suture it shut. The reason why they would leave it open is that it's nearly impossible to completely disinfect the, um, the foot. Um, or completely shave it, so it just makes more sense to leave it open. That way bacteria doesn't get in there um, and cause an infection. Guillotine is another method. Um, the veterinarian will take, it's essentially a nail trimmer. They'll put the, um, the toe into the opening there, up to this little, um, uh, the space between the third and second phalanx. They will hold pressure, um, and then eventually the third phalanx kind of falls off, and then they can either, again, suture it shut or leave it open. The last one is laser. It's very similar to the dissection. The only difference is that it's using a laser to, uh, instead of a scalpel, sometimes it can have faster healing time and more um, accurate measures when the veterinarian is trained properly on it. There are several complications that cats can experience with decline. Some of the biggest ones are pain, inflammation, infection, lameness, um, and even potential tissue necrosis, which is tissue that has died. Um, usually that's caused by the bandage that is placed on the foot not being placed properly or it's too tight. Um, so the circulation can't get to the toes. For long-term complications, lameness can continue. Uh, we talked about the anatomy of the foot, so um, they can't really adapt to the, a new way of walking, so they will have lameness. If the if the claw isn't completely removed, um, sometimes claws can regrow. Um, it's not very common, but it can happen. Um, draining tracts as well, or, or fascias, as they're co more commonly known, um, can occur as well. Um, and they just cause swelling and uh, more discomfort. Uh, an even more important complication long-term is behavioral changes. 
I'll go into a little bit more depth later with that. Some advantages of removing the claws. Um, obviously, it reduces scratching. If they don't have the claws, they can't use them. It also aids in the pet owner relationship. Um, the owners kind of don't resent their cat for ruining their couch anymore, so it improves the relationship. Um, as well as it reduces the spread of zoonotic diseases. Um, one in particular, you might have heard of it, is called um, cat scratch fever. Cat scratch fever is caused by a um, bacteria called Bartonella, and it actually lives on the surface of cat claws. So when they scratch you, um, and they are deep enough to um, draw blood and make an actual impact in your arm, um, the bacteria can get in your arm. It can cause infection, inflammation, fever, um, and a little bit of discomfort. So removing the nail, uh, if your cat does have it, um, can potentially prevent you from getting cat scratch fever. Some disadvantages, um, like we talked about before, is post-operative complications. There are several, whether they're directly after surgery or um, for long term. Um, negative behavioral changes are also a big thing. We have one cat that um, comes to my practice. She was declawed when she was very young. She was the sweetest cat and now she comes to see us every Monday and Friday um, for fluids and uh, she's not a happy camper. She doesn't have um, claws so she tries to bite us instead and that's uh, leading me up to another thing. They don't have claws so they use the next best thing, their teeth. And trust me when I say it hurts more than getting scratched. <laughs> um, another thing is that they, cats mark, cats have, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They have sensory glands in their, in their paws. So when they mark on trees, furniture, what have you, they mark their territory with scents from their, um, from their scent glands on their feet. Um, if they can't scratch anymore, then they are unable to mark. So they use the next best thing, urine. They will pee on trees, furniture, um, carpets, whatever they feel like marking. Um, and that can cause some stress in the household, if, especially if the cat is doing it in the household. And unfortunately, um, these disadvantages actually lead to owners relinquishing their pet. Um, usually what you would think would be a positive thing that would help animals stay in the home by declawing them. Um, it actually can cause more problems than having the claws in the first place. So owners will end up um, relinquishing their pet or even, or even euthanizing um, in more severe cases. Declawing is actually illegal in many countries, especially in Europe, um, including uh, France, Germany, Spain, um, I believe the United Kingdom, um, as well as um, in South America, Brazil, uh, Australia, New Zealand, and several other countries. It's completely legal in the United States, except for several states such as California, and I believe New York passed a law in 2019 um, making it illegal unless under um, different circumstances uh, that the cat needs to be declawed. Um, but there's no law completely banning it in the United States. Um, and unfortunately, um, the AVME, AVMA, which is American Veterinary Medical Association, has tried to get Congress to pass a law to prevent um, or to ban the decline of cats, but nothing has come yet. Veterinarians probably have the most important viewpoint um, because they're the ones actually doing the procedure. Um, most countries, most veterinarians in different countries find it um, mutilating and they think it's unfair to the cat 
that the owner wants them to not tear up their furniture, um, but it also causes a lot of pain and suffering for the cat itself. Um, most doctors will actually refuse to do it. Some think it's 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 kind of a balance between the well-being of the cat and just the desires of the owner. They would choose the well-being of the cat over the owner a million times. Um, and luckily, it's not a life-threatening or a life-saving procedure. Um, it's not an emergency surgery, so veterinarians have the right to deny um, surgery for the cat. Um, there are some veterinarians that continue to declaw. Um, they believe if it's done correctly that the complications will be minimal, um, it, just as long as it's done right. But um, other veterinarians don't want to take that chance, and they think that there should be other alternatives to declawing. There are several alternative methods that are non-surgical to declawing. The first one is training. Um, typically the owner can just train the cat on where it's appropriate to scratch and where it's not. Um, another one is nail caps. They're little plastic caps that go on each nail on each toe. Um, the owner will have to clip the nails first and then put the caps on. They can be changed out usually every month to six weeks. Um, uh, another one is frequent nail trimming. Um, keeping them short usually keeps them dull, um, which leads to less destruction when they do scratch. Another one is keeping scratching posts around the house. It invites the cat to scratch more appropriate areas rather than scratching inappropriate areas like furniture and so on. Um, the last one is pheromones. Pheromones can be sprayed on the scratching posts or in areas that the owner would prefer the animal to scratch. Um, that way, it's a more natural way for them to pick up on where to scratch and where not to. I talked about the AVMA before, um, but this is a policy that they created um, to kind of set like the standard of declawing. Basically, it just talks about how um, when given the choice between doing declawing and doing non-surgical options, obviously to choose non-surgical options unless um, there's circumstances where you need to do declawing. And then they also discuss on um, the veterinarians have a right to deny clients of declawing and that if declawing is actually done, that the patient is given the proper pain management and post-operative um, care to allow proper healing um, and uh, to ensure that um, if declawing is the only resort, that it is done within um, certain standards. I want to acknowledge Dr. Daniel Patron for inspiring this presentation. I took bioethics with him last year and I had to do a research project about declawing. Um, so this allowed me to go more in depth with it. So thank you to him. And then these are just my resources.